Uh, moving right along, something a little different for you. Um, I'm going to introduce our generative AI and tutor project, so really looking forward to it. I won't give any spoiler alerts, but just to say, be on the edges of your seat. I don't think any of us expected the impact this project was going to have. 36 students with 36 different perspectives from across the nation of Ireland. Bringing together a bunch of different universities. So I wanted to be involved in something that would show the positive sides. I think for myself, it helped me with my personal life as well as college life. I got involved in this project mainly to get out of my comfort zone. I would never normally do things like this, so... As I'm doing aerospace engineering, I kind of, I wanted to dive a bit deeper into how generative AI worked. My name is Kira Dalton. My name is Evelyn Cooper. My name is Matthew Maloney. My name is Lauren Johnston. My name is Ryan Welch. My name is Jessica Kennedy. Hi, I'm Kim. My name is Patrick Crowley. Hi, my name is Rihanna. My name is Thomas Wood. My name is Lucia Martin. My name is Max Jones and I am a Gen AI champion. I guess it all started with an email. Um, it kind of was this opportunity to explore uh, an area that was beginning and that we knew was going to be around for um, a long time. I think I just said to myself, what's the harm? Throw in an application. I don't think I actually even thought I'd get it. And then a few weeks later, an email came in asking when I could do an interview. The Generative AI Champions Project came out of some conversations. How might it support student learning? And that was how it started really. And I specifically was interested in students in terms of a test group with learning differences and disabilities, because those findings I think would be um, really interesting for them to share with all students to see how it might support their learning going forward. I think I did think it was going to be a lot of smart people asking what business I had as a media student joining this project, but it wasn't. It was a lot of welcoming people asking, you know, how did I want to help? I was excited about the possibilities of what this could mean for good um, and aware of things that could be maybe not for good as well. And it wasn't too much longer until I got a, an email saying you've been accepted. It really was the best feeling. It was a very, very quick uh, turnaround, which is unusual in the bureaucratic world of higher education. And before we even knew it, we were essentially at our first meeting. And and we started on the 13th of February, which was, I think, Valentine's Day, if you're a Parks and Rec fan. Yeah, the first meeting was good. It, it eased us into what this project was going to be about as a whole. But it also did, in a, in a way, throw us in on the deep end and let us know that this isn't just something you're going to log into every Thursday. This is going to be a project you're a part of. Uh, the task kind of reflected that um, nature of getting involved. You know, our first task was all about finding videos that we found helpful about generative AI and prompt engineering. And our second task was really about finding uh, a way to use a large language model to create a study plan for our specified subject. But I suppose task three is the one that really garnered interest. Um, it was all about using ChatGBT 3.5 as a personal tutor, how you program that and how easy it is and how helpful it could be to anyone who requires just that little bit extra aid when it comes to learning things. I mean, I think we all realized that people wanted to learn about this when we brought it to the AHEAD conference. What do you think when I say generative AI in education? You probably think things such as cheating, academic misconduct, or even job loss. What if we told you that generative AI could be so much more than that? What if we told you AI could be your personal tutor in a subject? In those initial conversations back in September, Dara Ryder, who's the, as I mentioned, the CEO of AHEAD, said, listen, we've got a couple conferences that this project might be able to um, speak to. So um, when we got together and uh, I got the dates, 
I uh, spoke with Erica Meslin, who's an amazing uh, person who works where I at, and said, look, you know, let's talk about maybe doing something. And, and she then came in to uh, one of our meetings and uh, sort of spoke to the champions, got a sense of, of them. And we'd already kind of talked about what we were, what we were doing. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever forget that, like, feeling of pride, but also dread when I found out I'd be speaking at Crow Park in front of, a, like, a room full of people. Because in my head, I was still just the media student who didn't belong among all these intellectuals. We had a team of, about, what was it, about nine people, I think, uh, were in the space with us that could make it and uh, it was open to anyone who, who wanted to travel and we we would arrange for their expenses we'd rehearsed and we did you know all that sort of thing um and it went down really really well what i was ex delighted to see was that the, the the guys really went out into the audience and started you know chatting with people and 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 making those connections and a lot of things came out of that conference for some of the students I think it was only really when I went into the crowd that I realized how much I actually knew. I was able to explain things and people were understanding. Uh, ed the educational uh, cohort who were there were just delighted and excited because when you hear from students, you know what you're really hearing. Yeah, it's true. I really think that conference gave me and a lot of the other champions more confidence when it came to other presentations and shows. Task 4 was the biggest of all the tasks. It involved a, a massive amount of self-choice, but also it encouraged group discussion. We were given two choices, either a research project using ChatGPT4 or just using any sort of generative artificial intelligence to make a project about something that you're interested in. I worked with the lovely Lauren Johnston to create a comic strip about uh, two boys living with dyspraxia and how getting a diagnosis young can make all the difference. We used uh, many image generation softwares to get the images and we used a lot of generative AI aids to get our information. The project really made us look into a lot of things we wouldn't have looked into before and ask a lot of questions that we never would have thought to ask. And that's really what I loved about this project as a whole. It was all about asking questions that sometimes you never even considered before. Task 4 really had a sense of this is wrapping up soon. And with Task 6, it really gave us an opportunity to reflect on our journey so far. We spoke directly about the project, answering different questions through audio or video. My name is Evelyn Cooper and I'm heading into my third year of Bioscience at SETU Carlo. My name is Matthew Maloney. I'm a third year student who's studying animation, motion graphics and special effects. This was really a chance for us to step back and just look at the journey so far. But the most important thing I think I discovered was how to use AI ethically um, for education and learning purposes. I discovered that mainly the world of generative AI isn't a scary place. One word to describe the project would be insightful. Enlightening. It would be cutting edge. Door opening. Um, synergy. Enlightening. Generative. If I had to describe it in one word, I'd say enlightening. While task four might have felt like the end, task six was the end. It was our final assignment and our time was nearly up. However, we did know there was a future in the project. You know, phase one kind of is sort of complete, but not really. I mean, uh, I know that this project is being used as a template for other projects already. I know that NTutor has just started a generative AI kind of position within each one of the seven HEIs. So that project, the, the NTutor project, and that funding is uh, finished at the, in, no, in December of this year. It may be renewed, but at this point they're, they're saying this is, this is where we end. I didn't know how attached I was going to get to this project and the other champions around me, and nor did I 
know the impact this project was going to have, but I joined anyway, out of curiosity or out of want for knowledge, and I think that's what brought us champions together, was that want for knowledge, and I think that's what's going to form the future of champions as we go forward with this project. And if I had to talk to any of the future champions, I'd just say, stay curious. It's the only way you can be as a Gen AI champion, is to stay curious. I'm Max Jones, and I was a Gen AI champion. <laughs>